Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All kinds of ruckus. Abraham's big old water cup. Sunday night for us, Monday morning for you guys. We are mm, here. Yes. yes, we're here. The dream team is here. So we are here. Oh my God, that's an old song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, that's a Rudy Pardee song. I don't know what that means, yeah. but okay. Look at my bangles. Look at my wrist. I love them. So. Thank you, Sister uh, Angelica. I love them. Angelina. Angelica. And Sister Angelina. <laughs> Angelica's like, I didn't get those. I know, Sister Angelina. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know why the background ain't color? Angelina. Huh? Gallegos. You know why the background? They're so beautiful. Did you even hear what I said? Why are they not colored, baby? Because I didn't feel like putting them on. So did you ask me to ask you that just so that you can say that? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's Sunday night. Um, My ears are cold. It was a... Uh... What did we do? <sighs> babe, what did we not do? I preached. I do know that. I sang, I do know that. Yeah. You went to go pick up the guys for the first oh, time. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Awesome. <clears throat> so, as you guys know, we got the van. Mm -hmm. And this was our first, well, second, sort of. Because the day we got it was Wednesday Bible study and we picked up one of the guys. Yeah, Michael. But today was the first Sunday with the van. And um, we have a brother that volunteered to drive because he used to drive a shuttle all the time, transporting. That was his job. And um, I asked him if he wouldn't mind taking up that ministry. And he said, yeah, you know, starting next week. So today um, we told him to be ready at 930 because you guys remember they would walk for over an hour just to get to service. It's an hour and a half. Today, yeah, right? an hour and a half walk. And um, so... What did Michael tell you when you picked him up? That he got to what? Sleep in. So, <laughs> so today um, I volunteered to go get them. Pulled up at 9.30 and there was a whole group of guys waiting. Mm -hmm. Five new, guys. New guys, two guys. Hey, new guys, two guys. What? I said new guys, two guys. Two guys? I said new guys, two guys. Oh. Uh. <laughs> so it was a, it was a it felt good I'm just gonna be honest it, it felt good and, and and as they were getting in the van it was a surreal feeling like like this trip started in a basement you know and, and we have our own van and we're picking up people and it was just a it was a surreal moment you know, and then I took them to the church, and I dropped them off in front. And I said, yeah, I'm going to leave to drop you guys off in front. You know, and then they all got out. And then I had to pull around the block to go, because we have an alley, to park it in the back. So then they went in, and they got to sit in the, in the lobby. They went to sit on the couches. And you know, the beautiful thing is, is that they literally had time to fellowship and mm -hmm. meet people and the family went up and they all introduced themselves and they had a chance to you know you know they're at 9 30 or so like around a little bit after that there's people that go into prayer um there's a room back there that people do prayer and and then there's music you know there's worship music going and then um <coughs> there's people that are in the a lobby in the lobby um people fellowship they talk and everything and they had a chance to get to know other people and talk to people and and that's a beautiful thing that they are able to do that yeah so we got to meet uh the two new people that we got to meet today were kevin and then we got to meet um oh my god what, what was the other guy's name kevin and uh not anthony Oh my God, I forgot the other guy's name. But Kevin was one of them for sure. Yeah, so... Um, I'll think about it, guys. I think there was five guys today. There, I believe next week it's going to be seven of them. 
you know, and I was just so grateful. When I got out of the car, yeah. I just started thanking God, you know, for this opportunity. Because you got to understand something, right? Is that when you have a Bible study or a church or something like that, mm -hmm. um, God is entrusting you with somebody's soul. Yeah. Like that is, okay, would you leave your kid off to any, bo any old babysitter? No, no you wouldn't. Never. And here, yet God loves us more than we love our kids. So the very fact that God had led these guys here, that that is a huge responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to be grateful for to the Lord, you know, and I'm just like, wow, look, God, you you trust us? Yeah. You trust us with, with these five souls. Like, that's a big deal. For God to trust you. That's a big deal. Absolutely. You know, and um, they do have a... A women's um, section of, of the, the gospel mission where they're at. And um, we're going to talk to them too, you know, and, and see. We got guys, I mean, there's so many of us, so many of you guys, so many of the, the, the house church, you know, the Modesto House of Rest church that, um, that sacrificed to give so we can get this van. And we want to use it for the Lord completely. You know, and, and utilize it in a way that it was meant to because God didn't give it to us just for nothing. He gave it to us to use it and to use it to to do whatever has to be done, you know, for the gospel. Amen. Amen. And, and we want to be good stewards of that. Amen. So it's like, Lord, help us steward this. Help open doors. What can we use this van for to utilize it? Because this is a tool that you gave us. And let us use it to your glory. <clears throat> you know, and that's kind of the whole idea. Amen. Um, so that happened, and um, man, it was a beautiful moment with um, a beautiful moment when we seen uh, Brother Tony go up and use the drums today. Yeah, that was a beautiful moment. Yeah, guys, um, <clears throat> want me to talk about that? Or... Yes. Yeah. Um, I had written this sermon because we went fishing on Saturday. Oh, yeah, that's what we did. So I knew I was going to be really busy because they wanted to meet at five in the morning. I'm not a five in the morning type of guy. And it was an hour and a half away. So that means I had to leave at 3.30. That means I had to wake up at three. I'm not a wake up at three o'clock kind of guy. So I wrote my sermon, what, Friday? Mm -hmm. Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm preaching. And um, actually, let me back up. During the announcements, Sharon went up there, and I turned on the drums. I'm going to be completely honest Because with you were you. being playful. You were kind of, you know... Yeah, but here's the thing, though, is literally, I went up there, and I, I played it off like I was being playful, but I was standing there, and then Sharon... Because, uh, guys, I've been feeling my allergies really bad since I went fishing. Yeah. Really bad. And I had to, like, overdose an allergy medicine just to get up there to preach, you know. So I was a little out of it, and I forgot a bunch of announcements. So Sharon came up, and I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not joking. I felt the Lord say, turn the drums on. And I just kind of did it. And then I, I that didn't, it, it kind of, it made a popping sound, and I got embarrassed. So I just pretended like I hit it. <laughs> I did that out of. Out of just, I just felt embarrassed because it popped. <laughs> and that's why I was like, oh my God, this guy. <clears throat> yeah, so, and then I, I forgot about it. Didn't think nothing of it. Boom, I get into the sermon. And I'm preaching, preaching, and the, uh, I went so many different directions that my sermon wasn't, first of all. Throughout the whole thing, you guys wouldn't know that. You wouldn't know that. Mm -hmm. I knew what my sermon was, and I was just like going all over the place, but it was making sense. And so I knew, it's like, a, you know, the airplanes, they, they get this, they catch this air where there's no turbulence, there's no nothing. It just kind of catches air. And, and I've been preaching long enough to know when the sermon just, boom, like, the, like, the, like flying a kite and the wind finally catches it. So I'm just going. And toward the end of the sermon, I was supposed to preach completely something different. <clears throat> and if you really watch... Um, 
if you even look at the seconds or maybe a few minutes where you see me close the book, back it up again. Because I, I feel like the Lord said, I got something different for you. And I kind of ignored it for a little bit. And it's almost like he said, close your tablet. And then I say it. I said, the Lord just said to close my tablet. Boom, I closed it. <laughs> <clears throat> and I said, so I don't know what the Lord wants me to say. And I started pacing. I know, I saw that. Because yeah, I, I, I literally you. was blank. I didn't know what to say. I turned my tablet off. No notes, no nothing. And I'm like, I think I was up there and I said, God, and tell me. And then you started talking about your gifts, about the gifts. And the socks. Yes. I went the into socks. the socks and, and the gifts and, and, it, and it got real heavy, man. It got heavy. And then the Lord said, I want you to call Tony up here because I want my gift from him. And honestly, Brother Tony's been going through a lot. And I looked at him. Again, watch the video. I look at him and I'm like, Lord, don't. He's, he's broken. You know? And the Lord said, I want my gift from him. And then boom, I say, and then I mention his name. You know, and I kind of go into that. And it's like, I, I guess so. Maybe today's topic is this. Do you quiet yourself enough to hear God? And second, do you question him or do you just follow orders? Yeah. And, and that is something we all have to learn because we're, uh, most of us are of a generation that we want to ask questions. You know, I used to do it to my dad, but you know, you know who, my brother Angel did it more. He was like, I want you to go cut the grass. Why? Why today? Why right now? Why? You know, it's always why. Instead of my dad would be like, just do it because I told you. Yeah. <coughs> like, you know, it's funny what I did do to my dad. Mm. He'd be like, hey, get ready. We're leaving. Where are we going? I used to say that. I'd be like eight. <laughs> and he's like, doesn't matter where we're going. You're just going. So get ready. <laughs> you know, like that doesn't kind of answers my dad would give me. And it was funny, you know, mm. but do we do that to God, guys? Has there been times when God has spoken to you and you actually thought it was a suggestion? Let me say that again. Has God ever spoken to you to do something and you took it as a suggestion? Let me tell you something. When God speaks, it's to do. And even when it's about to, I felt, ruin the service. Because I had a whole other page of sermon and God's like, shut your tablet. And I could have easily gone into whiny mode. Yeah. God, I took long. I wrote that whole ending. I wrote that conclusion of sermon. You're going to mess it up, this and that. Or am I just going to obey? And we have to learn to hear his voice. What are we going to look up? Nothing. Okay. Oh, because I had a verse to look up. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, I thought of this that coincides with this. It's the book of Acts. You open the book of Acts. And um, in the book of Acts, <clears throat> and I'll tell you exactly where right now. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Acts. I'm looking to see. I wasn't ready for this. So, okay, here it is. Uh, no, that wasn't it. Um, it's the time when the, when, um, <clears throat> the guy, oh, there it is. Acts chapter eight, verse 26. I want you to see what I'm saying and we're going to see it in biblical example. Okay. So it says this in Acts eight, 26. It says, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, the man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. Is 2627 alone or to 28? 28? 28 says, was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah. 
the prostate. <clears throat> Later, God's angel, David speak. sorry, David reads out of the New King James, and I'll be reading out of the message. Later, God's angel spoke to Philip, at noon today, I want you to walk over to that desolate road that goes from Jerusalem down to Gaza. He got up and went. went. He met an Ethiopian eunuch coming down the road. The eunuch had been on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and was returning to Ethiopia where he was minister in charge of all the finances of Candace, queen of Ethiopians. He was riding in a chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah. Okay. If you, sk if you skim it, you're going to miss it. Okay. This is the part I want to get to. In that very first part. So it says an angel of the Lord spoke, spoke to, to Philip, Philip and told him, Arise and go toward the south along the road, which goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he arose... And went. Got up and went. He didn't question. He just got up and went. He just did it. It ain't none of his business to ask God. If God tells you to do something, you do it. Why? Because unknown to Philip, there was this Ethiopian treasure of the queen that happened to be reading the book of Isaiah. And the Lord saw this Ethiopian that doesn't know about Jesus trying to understand Isaiah. Actually, he was reading Isaiah 53. So the Lord said, hmm, which one, who am I going to send? Oh, Philip's closest. Hey, Philip, I want you to go down this way. And Philip does it. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and <clears throat> this is a perfect example that it wasn't a suggestion to him. And he didn't question it. He just did it. There have been times, right? Has there not been times where we're driving? We're driving on the freeway. For no reason, I'll take an exit. And Sharon's already used to this. She's like, oh, why'd you take this exit? I don't know. I, I, I just feel like the Lord said, get off this exit. And you know what? Nothing happened. We just got home. But how do I know what would have happened if I would stay? We don't know. It's not like he says, get off the exit. So, so some crazy, some miraculous. What if it's just to get us home safe? Have there not there been, there's been times when it's rained. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? We, we can't be on here. I, I feel like we got to get off this freeway right now. Don't we do that a lot? Yeah. What are we going to read? Did you find something else? It's the same thing with, with Abraham and Isaac. Where? When God told him to go. Genesis 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where are you at? That's where I was I was going to earlier. Genesis 22. <clears throat> 22 what? So I can read it first in here. Uh, Genesis 22. One. Okay, look at this. Genesis 22. One says, Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Keep going. Right there. That's yeah, it. Yeah. You're going to read no, it? No questions asked. After all this, God tested Abraham. God said, Abraham. Yes, answered Abraham. I'm listening. He said, take your dear son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains and I'll point, that I'll point out to you. Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. He took two of his young servants and his son Isaac. He had split wood for the burnt offering. He set out for the place God had directed him. On the third day, he looked up and saw the place in the distance. Yeah. So... He told Abraham to do something. And even though Abraham didn't fully understand or comprehend why God would ask that of him, he did it. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to sit here and act like, like I'm perfect. You know, sometimes I'm in a hurry. I am in a hurry. And sometimes I'll feel like the Lord is telling me to do this, do that, and, and I don't do it. Maybe I'm trying to get somewhere. Maybe I'm hungry. And that's just, I'm just being, I'm just being real. 
but I will say this that I try. I think and, and I think Sharon <clears throat> she's a little more sensitive to that. You know, and um and I and I love that about her because I can be insensitive. Sometimes I do hear his voice and I just act like I don't. But when it's big things, guys, when it's big things, I, I really do my best to just obey. You know, and you know, for whatever reason, the Lord wanted to call Tony up. I, I, I'll be honest, um, some of the things he's going through, I wouldn't have called him up. I wouldn't have. But who am I? I'm just assistant pastor. Jesus is a senior pastor. I'm not. And if the senior pastor says, call Tony up, literally God was like, call Tony up. I want my gift. Hey. You're the senior pastor. <clears throat> so I have to operate in a way where that's not just a, a cute little saying of our church. Yeah. We really live in in the belief that Jesus is the senior pastor of House of Rest Church. It's his stuff. It's his camera. This is this is his YouTube channel. His lights. His little microphones. It belongs to him because Early on, we were like, God, we don't want nothing unless it's something that you give. You know, and we just need to learn, guys, to, to obey. You know, we were talking about somebody earlier today and discussing, not talking about them like cheese man. I mean, we were just discussing, you know, some, some things and a person came up. And both of us, it's crazy because the Lord had said the same thing, and maybe in different ways. But the Lord told me, and, and then you can share your end. The Lord said, if you're complaining so much, why have you not prayed about them to me? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh my God, Lord, you're right. Yeah. And and the Lord had placed it in my heart um, to to reach out, you know, and, and to go, to reach out and to, and to go um, see this person. You know, and that had been placed in my heart, you know. Yeah. You know, I think um, <clears throat> I think a lot of the times whenever we, we go through stuff with people or whenever we go through a lot of the times, you know, I think sometimes we got to give people space sometimes to go through things, which, mm -hmm. is, which is okay. But sometimes too much space or too much time is not good. Um, during that time, you need to be in prayer for them. We need to be in prayer for them. We need to be interceding um, and all of that. But too much time is not good because what happens is that the enemy, the enemy begins to work in the mind of that other person and they begin to think that, that we don't care or that um, we have forgotten them or we, you know, or that we're insensitive and stuff like that. And we got to be careful with that because it's so easy for the enemy to come in and start to use that against people. And, and it's so easy for walls to be built um, and for people to take things wrongly when really, truly, realistically, what people are doing are interceding, when people are, are praying, when people are really, really trying to intercede in prayer. Um, and just giving people space, you know, but, you know, at this point, sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta guard up and you gotta, you gotta just come in full force and fight because, um, sometimes things can get kind of ugly and you gotta go in there and fight for the people that you love. Um, you gotta go in there and, and, and just do it guys. Mm -hmm. Um, because ultimately this is the kingdom and in the kingdom what we have is we have family and we love each other whether we be just at house arrest or out of house arrest um the kingdom of god you know we're all children of god and we we love each other even for those that maybe you know sometimes trip a little bit or fall you know um or stumble sometimes we we got to love each other and even for the ones that are angry or sometimes go through those moments, it's okay. You know what? We're dysfunctional. It, it, it is what it is, you know? <coughs> Family can be dysfunctional. We can be kind of crazy sometimes, but 
that's what life is guys we we do life together and uh and that's that's what it's about yeah you know and it was weird because all these days <clears throat> i've been very conflicted about this person and and sad and angry and then sad and then angry again and literally like i felt like the lord said why have you not brought this to me i'm the only one that can change anything amen i'm the only one mm -hmm. so do you believe in me or not amen. and the lord checks me man mm -hmm. and and i have to submit because he's my authority <clears throat> you know so you know and i haven't even discussed with sharon yet but like i i, I want to literally go to battle for this person in prayer and i'm not meaning see here's the thing i'm not meaning add them to a list of prayers i mean we're gonna pray for this person and whatever the lord puts on our house our hearts collectively together because it's something i'm not gonna be like the lord said 14 days so you got no we, we could talk about it we're collective and we're just gonna go to battle and and i feel like the lord is saying don't even tell them you're praying for them just do it because mm -hmm. it's god that's going to change things that's right. and and maybe the second day third day maybe the 10th day god will say boom now let them know or maybe he will say never let them know this is what i'm talking about uh, listening to the voice of god because he knows how to handle situations he knows some people it'll set them free to know they're being prayed for others it does the opposite and they cower and hide. So we got to have wisdom and trust in God. And see, yeah. and see, and that's the thing that a lot of the times people want to let people know because they want to get a pat on the back yeah. or they want to get, see, a lot of, <coughs> see, yeah. you got to be willing, you got to be willing to pray for somebody regardless of being talked about, regardless of being looked upon a certain way you got to be willing to pray for people regardless of the outcome guys we got to be willing to pray for people just because you're willing to pray for them because you just love them yeah and because we love the lord and because it's our mandate to do so whether they ever know it or not yes exactly yeah. so you know what just go into battle just intercede and just do it at any cost just do it Exactly. You know, they don't need to know. You know, a lot of the times, you know, um, you know, I remember that I used to have somebody who would always come and they, they had to tell me, I just need you to know that I'm praying for you, okay? That I'm praying for you and I'm, and I, you know, they always had to let me know and I'd be like, oh, thank you, thank you, you know, and they'd call me and tell me, sister, I prayed for you today for this and I loved it and I was so appreciative and everything and and but you're praying for me too right you're praying for me too but the thing was is that I I didn't pray for them and I felt really <laughs> bad at that time because I was like I felt <clears throat> like maybe I was so you know there were times that I was praying for them but there was times that I was not because I, I just wasn't. I was so busy being a mom, a young mom and I was just so busy that life you know and i was like did you pray for me to and i wasn't gonna lie and i'm like no i'm so sorry sis i didn't pray for you you know <laughs> so <laughs> i was just you know being honest but I, I i just you know i just i didn't and i was like oh my god lord and i started to feel so guilty that i felt like i was starting to hide yeah. from this person you know because i was like Oh my God, they're coming around. So I'd start hiding and I started to feel like I needed to hide from this person because That's I weird. was like, so I just like, no, you know, but guys, um, trust me, I'm not going to hide from anybody. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going to be yeah. honest. But, um, that was when I was young, I was a baby in Christ and I was just learning how to pray and do all that, you know, but Man, we, we got we to gotta be honest with ourselves. We got to intercede. Um, and we just we just do it. Do it in our spirit. And, mm -hmm. and you don't have to let people know, guys. So three more things I want to talk about. One is, so because I, I might forget, one is the fishing, RBT. Second is Amber. She asked for prayer today, and I want to give you a praise report about that. And third, um, our dinner meeting. Okay, yes. Okay. So let's go back to the RBT. Um, 
it wasn't an RBT official thing, but it happened to be that Sal, you guys know our Sal that comments, he had an idea of getting together to fish with Brother Tony. Because mm -hmm. Tony, you know, it's, it's been rough. And he's like, man, I want to do something. You know, let's, let's get him out. And then um, he invited Alex, who is one of our moderators. Actually, he went to church today, and that was awesome. You know, and it's safe for spiritual journey too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And then he invited uh, Brother Johnny, the one that has a Bible study on Tuesday, but Johnny couldn't make it because he's been working on that truck since last week and he couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. And then me, and I brought along Abraham. Uh, Alex brought his son and his daughter. Anyways, we went, had a really fun time. I had never ever fished in my entire life. I I, I was joking with everybody. I'm like, I'm very conflicted here that we're here to catch fish. And they're like, What do you mean? I said, first of all, my hobby is to, I have fish as pets. <laughs> and they're like, what's the confliction? I said, then I like seafood. I'm very conflicted because I have them as pets, but I like to eat them. I don't eat my pets, but you know what I mean? I eat seafood. I said, so I have a feeling that if I catch a fish and watch it die, I'll be very sad. But then when I cook it and taste it, I'll be happy. And you know what the funny thing is, guys, is that Abraham, two years ago, is it two or three years ago? Three years now. It might be four, I don't know. Three, three years ago, Abraham took literally, he had like, he took like all his birthday money one year and he bought him a fishing pole, a fishing tackle box and some hooks and stuff. And it's, it was brand new and it had been sitting in the garage for oh, close to three years, I think. And that's where it's been sitting. It's been sitting in the garage for three years. Yeah. It was brand new. Brand spanking new. So I tell you, I didn't know how to do nothing. I didn't know how to throw the line. I didn't yeah. know nothing. So I tell the guys, I was like, dude, I'm willing to go. Um, I have an empty tackle box with a couple hooks. I don't know how to attach them. And I have this fishing rod. I said, it's brand new. I don't think he realized how brand new. Because Alex is like, dude, you still have the plastic on it. <laughs> it still looks so <laughs> brand new. Like Abraham bought it yeah. and it was like brand spanking new. And then Alex is like, dude, this, this is a nice, this is nice. He spent 200 and something dollars yeah. on well, this Well, Alex stuff. goes, this is a nice fishing pole, you know? Yes. And I was like, well, I, I don't know nothing about them. I don't know. He spent all his birthday you money, know? this kid, so, on you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, I learned how to, I didn't catch nothing, but I learned how to throw the Abraham line. Abraham did. Yeah, Abraham caught a fish. You said, yeah, I saw the video. So that's the first thing. That was a lot of fun. I know, like, Danny reached out, and he's like, dude, I love fishing. And, you know, and I'm like, dude, this was like, I'm sorry. I was invited. I don't even know what I was doing. I didn't take nothing. Like, these guys brought food and barbecue and like I literally took myself and my brand new fishing pole because I, I, that's it <laughs> that's it so I wasn't the host you know but I mean now I know that Danny likes fishing so awesome. and I know Jose fishes remember he yeah fishes yes in Sacramento. guys so you guys should plan another trip guys <clears throat> but I'm not driving an hour and a half this time I'm gonna fish in the ranch by my dad's yes my dad there's a river behind my dad's so so that's the first thing we want to talk about. Second thing is um, Sister Amber, she came to visit and she came up at the end of service and asked for prayer. And um, anyways, I don't want to take a long time, but it is beautiful, man, because she has started watching us. I don't know the full story, but she has she she has a cane. So I'm not sure what's going on, but she has having a lot of pain in, in her like waist or back or something. Mm -hmm. And um she said she had been watching online. She goes, and you prayed over the internet for healing. And she said she felt like fire, like just straight heat. Mm -hmm. And um, the pain has never been the same since. She goes, the pain is still there, but nothing like it was. Like just constant. And she says from that moment when she felt that heat, it went away. You know, and uh, today she came up to pray for complete healing. You know, but, <clears throat> you know, it, it was beautiful, you know, when, when a family can come. and Yes. And it, it gets, <clears throat> it, it's encouraging, you know, when, when I do pray over the this phone or whatever. Amen. You know. Amen. So now the third thing was, you guys remember 
months ago that we couldn't figure out who the electrician was, that somebody was an electrician and they offered their services to us. And remember, guys, it was, I don't know how, two, three months ago, we're like, we can't figure out who it is. So if it's you, please comment. Remember that? Mm -hmm. We couldn't figure out. <clears throat> well, we figured it out. We figured it out. And we didn't know. Yeah. Until after. Yeah. So uh, a brother that um, he watched last week's service about the glory. And um, he watched it. He's and moved. He was moved because he was asking God, Lord, I don't know where to go to church at. I have no idea. You know, his name's Raymond, Brother Raymond. He was like, I have no idea, God. And he started watching the service. And apparently I said something in the sermon that only him and God knew. And he's like, I need an answer. I need an answer from you of where to go. And then, boom, I said something. And he's like, boom. Like, it was just an, an epiphany for him. And he knew that House of Rest was going to be his home church. Yes. So um, he called me and he's like, is there any way I can meet with you guys over, over dinner? You know, and, and he came all the way from San Jose. We met in Tracy. And um, <clears throat> so as we were getting out of the car, you walked ahead to get a table. Mm -hmm. You know, and he had mentioned um, something about him being an electrician. I was like, wait a second. Was that you that offered? Like months, months. He was, yeah, that's me. It's like, dude, we've been trying to figure out who it was that, that said somebody had said they're an electrician and if we ever need anything. And he was, yeah, that's me, you know. And mm -hmm. So we finally solved the mystery. The guys. mystery. Yes. It's Brother Raymond and um, it's him. And he's like, man, House of Rest is my church. That's my family. And I don't care if I got to commute. From San Jose is, is is over an hour away. I know he's looking to relocate. He's like, if he's, I gotta relocate, whatever. He's looking to relocate this way. Because yeah, his job offers opportunities for him to relocate. Yeah. So, um, so that was cool. We we broke bread with him. <clears throat> you know, he shared his heart. And and if you're watching, brother, uh, we had a really great time with yes, you. Yes, thank and, you. Yes. And uh, we look forward to more times that we can just sit and talk. You know. Yeah. And, and then another thing that we 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 had um, we got a phone call from from the the gentleman that we bought the van from uh, oh, from yeah. Chris, which was really awesome, guys. You know because he he's like, did you get that you know that glass taken care of yet? If you haven't, you know why don't you come back and you know we can do it over here at the house. You know I'll have the guy come over here and take care of it. And we had already taken care of the glass for the van, the windshield for the windshield. Yeah, and. Um, and I said, yeah, we did it already. He's all, you know, I just wanted to let you know that I've been watching your videos, you know, your YouTube. And mm -hmm. it just brought me so much joy, guys, to know. Chris, if you're watching, hello. It's good to, 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 I'm glad to know that you're, you're watching the videos. Um, and thank you. Thank you for chiming in. And I'm, I'm glad that you're able to see that the, the van it has been such a blessing and that the young men, if you were able to watch the sermon, um, at the end, the group of young men that came to the front that were all, um, in, in unity at the end, those are the young men, those are the product of, and the blessing, the fruit that came out of that van. So thank you so much. I just yeah. wanted you to know that, but, um, <clears throat> Man, it's just a blessing for him to to say, yeah, I've been able to watch. And I really believe that that's, that's the friendship or that's what the Lord wanted to bring out of this. That's the mm -hmm. blessing, the fruit that came out of this van. Yes, it was the van. Yes, it was, uh, you know, for us to be able to get the men from the gospel mission. But I also believe that it was for us to be able to to uh, meet Chris as well. Yeah. And, and I know that. So... All the way around, it's just been blessings. Yeah. Blessings after blessings. All yes. Right. So, guys, we talked a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A um, little bit of this. But for the most part, that. it's, it's um, <laughs> learn to, to hear his voice and, and obey because he's always going to know better than us. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. all right, guys. God One last. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, One last sorry. thing. One last thing. <laughs> Rewind. One last thing, uh, for local, local, H-O-R-C, um, R-B-T, local, Phyllis, 
you know, Sal, Enriquez, you know, uh, 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 Rojas, you know, Laura Rojas, you know, for you that you have, you guys that have youth, people that have youth, um, for the 27th, please reach out to me, please, um, let me know, call, you know, call me, you know, message me, for those of you guys that are local here to the Modesto, that want to have your youth come to the, to the first youth, um, outing that they're going to have, please message me, at housearrestchurch at gmail.com or or call me you guys have a way to contact me so please reach out to me so i can give you guys more information we're going to be putting that little flyer out so that i can sign your youth up okay and not just youth young adults it, youth and young adults okay up to the age of 22 23 um and you know from there we'll take it from there but just reach out to me and just message me and um one last thing is that just if you do message me and everything, please put down a contact number for me to contact you back. But we will set out a flyer so that we, we that way we can be able to let people know. All right. All right, guys. See you later. Bye. Love you guys.